Katie Streepy from Glue and Glitter, and today I'm going to show you how you can make one giant chocolate chip mega cookie in your air fryer. I love this cookie recipe because it makes just the one cookie. Usually a cookie recipe is going to make like three to five dozen cookies, and that is too many. When I'm craving a cookie, I'm craving a cookie, maybe two. This is perfect for when you want a cookie or maybe you and a friend want a cookie, but you don't want cookies just sitting around your house for days and days tempting you afterwards. The other thing I love about this recipe is that it cooks up in about half the time it would take in the oven, and that's because you make it in your air fryer. And speaking of air fryers, I wanna introduce you to my air fryer. This is the Zen Chef Pro Double XL, and even if they weren't sponsoring this video, I would tell you that I love this air fryer. It is nice and big. It's 5.8 quarts, which means there's plenty of room to cook for my family of three and make enough for leftovers. It also has a magical S button right here. And that S stands for start, but it also stands for stop. I don't know if you already have an air fryer, but if you do, I'm sure you've experienced uh, cooking something like tofu or maybe veggies and something is done a little sooner than you anticipated and you just have to unplug that air fryer while it is running from the wall. Sparks fly sometimes, it's scary. This button lets you stop the air fryer from cooking just like you would turn off any other appliance when you were done using it. It's magical. The other thing I love about this air fryer is that it's really quiet while it's cooking. There's not that like whoosh of air constantly. That means that if I'm craving cookies late at night, I don't have to wake my kid up with my loud air fryer while I'm doing it. So enough about my air fryer. Let's talk about these cookies. There are a few things that I want you to know about this recipe before you start making it. The first thing I want you to know is that you should line the basket with parchment paper. I mentioned this in the written recipe, but I'm reiterating it here because it's so important. The Zen Chef basket is less prone to sticking than um, a basket with mesh on the bottom would be, but you still need parchment paper for this recipe. Most baked recipes in the air fryer, you're gonna wanna line the basket. Um, please use parchment paper. Do not use aluminum foil. That's gonna scratch your basket. And do not use wax paper because you want to eat cookie, not wax, and wax melts. The other thing that um, you should know about this recipe is that the dough doesn't um, spread very much when you're cooking. So you're gonna need to shape this cookie. And so what I like to do is lay out my piece of parchment paper first stick the ball of dough in the middle, and then use a second piece of parchment paper to kind of squish it into a nice round shape. And then I pull the parchment paper away, and this is crucial too. You really want to shape your cookie and focus on the edges. As you can see, this cookie doesn't have totally perfect edges, but I did take a little bit of care and try to smooth them out. If you have cracks on the edges when you put it in the air fryer, you're gonna have cracks on the edges when it comes out. And I feel like this cookie looks best when it's pretty symmetrical and smooth. Just do your best work. Think of it as a fun pre-cookie craft project. So the last thing you need to know about the cooking process is that this recipe calls for cooling your cookie in the air fryer basket. Make sure that you've pulled the basket out of the fryer. Don't leave it in there because that's gonna retain too much heat. Um, so pull the basket out and then stick it on a trivet on your kitchen counter. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little baking secret. The reason that you have to cool cookies on the baking sheet, or this in this case in the air fryer basket, is because that ambient heat is actually doing a little bit of last minute cooking. Uh, you can eat this immediately when it comes out, but it's going to be very gooey. I really encourage you to let it cool completely. It's still going to be that nice, soft, cakey, chocolatey cookie. If you can just wait 10 more minutes, it'll be way better. That's everything about the cooking process. The only other thing I wanted to talk about is um, the egg replacer we use in this recipe. I'm using aquafaba as the egg replacer. Do not panic. If you've never heard of aquafaba before, I have a video on my YouTube channel about it. You can just search for aquafaba up in the search box. So I'm just gonna give the quick and dirty on aquafaba here. If you wanna really know more, you can look for the full video I did about it. Aquafaba is basically free. It's the liquid that you get when you drain a can of beans. So next time you're making beans um, from a can, stick a bowl under the colander to catch that precious, precious bean liquid. And then what I like to do is pour it into an ice cube tray 
and stick it in the freezer and that way I have a tray full of freezer eggs that I can use anytime I'm baking. For this recipe and for most baking recipes you're going to want to use defrosted aquafaba. Um, I just stick the cube into a mug and stick the mug in my microwave. When you pull it out though it's going to be hot and so what I encourage you to do is before you start pulling out the other ingredients, defrost your aquafaba and stick it in the fridge because if you pour it into the butter mixture while it's still hot, it's gonna melt the butter, which you don't want. And if you work quickly and pour it into the flour and chocolate chip mixture while it's also still hot, you will melt the chocolate chips and ruin your cookies. I have done this a few times with aquafaba when I was being impatient about letting it cool. It doesn't have to be like room temperature, but you do not want it hot. You want it warm to the touch where it's comfortable to hold the bottom of the mug without burning your fingers, you know? I think that's really all you need to know about this recipe, so let's cut to the overhead and get cooking. <laughs> 